We've been using zero water for about, I guess, six or seven years now, and we read about this Brita thing, and some people told us it tastes a little better. It removes the heavy metals like lead and chromium, supposedly. It leaves a lot of the other stuff in. Not sure how that works, but uh, seems like pretty amazing technology. This is a, a different setup now than our zero. The Brita, you have to actually rinse the filter off for about 15 seconds, and it says your first, uh, your first collection of water may have some residue and it might be a little gray so you dump it out and got to do this a couple times supposedly these things last a couple of months so we decided to give it a shot we ran water through it a couple of times and it comes out a lot faster than the zero water that was the first thing i noticed so it can't well it doesn't filter as much as the zero water filter is because it doesn't take it all the way down to zero it comes with a nice little filter life indicator i think it lasts two months once you reset it on the top of the mini filter so we decided let's run this against zero water because zero water filters a lot slower. It's a little more expensive, but it takes everything, all the dissolved solids out. So it was time to do the Brita showdown versus zero water. We're also going to throw our Samsung refrigerator water and tap water in there too, just to measure everything. We're going to measure. It's not really a scientific study. So yeah, it's, it's just measuring total dissolved solids, which is just the combination of all the junkets in the water. And we'll also measure pH because we get a lot of comments because people want to know what the pH are saying. If pH is terrible, it's going to be like drinking acid, which it's really not. And you'll be surprised when you see what happened here. So we did uh, Brita water, zero water. Number three was our Samsung refrigerator and then plain old Cocoa Florida tap water. We had run a bunch of water before we did this test, so the pipes were pretty clean. All right, so we started with a TDS test. Of course, Brita is not going to be zero, but it takes something out. So it told us about 0.343 parts per million total dissolved solids. So, you know, that's, it's kind of high. I mean, depending on where you live, it could be higher or lower. Zero water um, came in at 0.004. It's a new filter. We had just changed it today. So it might've had some of the residual or the residue from the uh, Brita. Samsung came in kind of low. It came in lower than the Brita at 0.275 to 280 ppm. And a tap water, it's, it's about where it normally is, about 370 to 400. This time it came in about 372, 380, somewhere around there. So the next thing we did was the pH test. This was really surprising because you'll see this in a second. I don't want to spoil it for you. You'd think that the Brita would have a much higher or much more alkaline pH than the rest of them. But surprisingly, it was the lowest or most acid. This was really weird. It came in 575 to about six. I'd give you 6.25 at the top. These things aren't completely accurate. You're kind of gauging colors here, but surprising still how low it was. And what's really funny is these kind of graduated. I expected zero water because it takes everything out. I expected zero water to be extremely acidic, but guess what? It was actually higher. The I mean, it was more alkaline than the Brita water. And that just blew my mind because it's taking all the dissolved solids out. So whatever it's taken out is not making the water more acidic. Now to the Samsung fridge, obviously this is going to be more alkaline and it was, came in at about 6.5 to about 6.75, somewhere between those. And then the tap water should be the most, uh, most balanced and it probably is because it pours all the stuff out of the uh, pipes when it's coming to your house. It's kind of gross when you really think about it, if you know the technology behind it, but don't think about that. Uh, it's clean, but the pH comes in as the most alkaline at, well, it's about balanced at almost seven, 6.75 to seven, which is great. That's a great, that's a perfect test, exactly where it's supposed to be. So we've got our total dissolved solids and we have our pH test. Really surprised. And now we did a blind taste test. Again, extremely subjective, not completely scientific. But still, it'll give you the gist of what water tastes the best. Now, Felicia had no idea what she was drinking here. And I gave her the tap water second. Look at her face. See? The tap water tastes nasty, man. People say water doesn't have a taste, but I can definitely tell the difference. And what's funny is we've been drinking zero water for years. You think we would know the difference? But her preference was the Brita. She said the Brita tasted like clean water was, was her remarks. I did it after she did. And again, blindfolded, I had no idea what she was going to pull first. And she gave me the fridge water first. And the fridge water is not bad. I mean, none of this is really bad. You can definitely taste a more chlorine or chloramine, if you will, taste on the tap water. But uh, again, which was really strange and I was really surprised and this blew my mind is the one I preferred. I thought for sure I would know the zero water. Is it very, 
very particular about this. But believe it or not, I preferred the Brita over the Zero Water myself with the higher TDS and the, and the more acidic pH. It's really strange. So yeah, this Brita filter, the Brita water is good. It's tasty. It's hopefully removing the lead. We want to send it out to a professional laboratory, but those are about $250 a test. We may set up a, a, a crowdfunding thing, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, check it out. We like the Brita water. Hands down, it won.